it's breeding season and basically today in this video you guys are going to accompany me into breeding my basically adding my males to my female corn snakes and i'm just going to basically show you guys how we do it we're going to go through the whole room switch male from female one to two and from that point on i'll just talk during the video tell you guys a little bit of how we do things and then maybe as you see some awesome footage i will show you guys some amazing animals and we're going to get up close So guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here. Uh, super excited about this little video. I thought, you, you know what, maybe we could do something, just you, me, and a bunch of awesome snakes, and we're gonna get talking. Uh, basically, you guys are just gonna be listening at this point. I would love to hear you guys talk, but that's up for show, so make sure that we're, we'll hang out uh, soon enough at a show nearby. But before we get started into this video, I just want to give a shout out to my buddy Eric Westmoreland from ECW uh, Reptiles. Now, Eric produces some of the most amazing corn snakes in the United States. Um, make sure you go check him out. But what I wanted to say is that he has basically a, um, he's into a legal action right now and he just needs uh, some help to fight his battle. So, I mean, it's only useful that we support the community, uh, whatnot. So we basically uh, got these awesome shirts. And I mean, even if you don't want to support them, they just look amazing. So this is like a scaleless uh, albino corn and says enemy of the state. So, I mean, uh, cor uh, scaleless corn snakes are illegal in the state of Illinois. So from that point on, uh, that's uh, a battle that is uh, due from that point on. So I won't uh, say anything extra on that level, but you guys go support and uh, uh, show some love because I mean, he definitely has some amazing animals and amazing knowledge on the facts. So just keep it up and uh, support, the, support the crew. So we're going to dig in. Uh, basically, what we do is that I have, um, I basically have one male with two females. So what I do is usually when I breed them, I just take one male and switch them to the other female. Switch the little sticker so that we know where the male is and we go from there. So by the time that we're done breeding everyone, uh, basically changing every everybody around, I know that I have to make sure that I go check them out because corn snakes actually like copulate really, really fast. And from that point on, we want to make sure that uh, we don't we don't miss any copulations because actually seeing a copulation is definitely definitely important at that at that point. So we're just gonna go have one, two, three, ooh. and then basically yeah. So we just I just gotta make sure that everything gets done uh, properly. And then uh, from that point on, we're good. So I'm just like uh, right now I'm talking at the same time, so it seems like my ADD is uh, definitely playing. I'm like not putting the male at the right place, but um, nonetheless, uh, they definitely do go right together. So I'm just removing them. And then at the end that I've done everybody, what I do is I basically just, um, I basically just uh, check them to make sure that they are copulating or not. And I mean, look at this amazing Ogeti Abbott scaleless corn male. So this is definitely a really, he's a young male, but definitely amazing looking right there. So I'm gonna be just adding him to a reverse head scaleless, reverse Ogeti head scaleless, because they're just stunning. Now, some of my amazing, oh, look at this. This is gonna be a nice picture right there. Scaleless albino corn snake, just beautiful male, big fat male, and it is time to breed. So this is what, just a little bit of what we do. Um, we try to breed every female, probably every five days. And then from that point on, we just move along and switch them as we go in between. We also make sure that we do that we do feed them because we want to make sure that they get uh, that they get fed uh, really well. Yeah, this is some amazing males. Now, 
most of the time people wonder, they're like, oh my God, how do you know which one's the male and which one's the female? Well, the, the, the corn snakes are really easy because the males, they have a very like, like basically thick, but very long, long tail. So just by opening the bin and seeing the tail, I can actually see which ones are the males and which ones are the female. And then from that point on, I just switch them over. So that's just where it is. Now, another thing that I also notice is that the male usually is on top. So the female like kind of burrows down the substrate and then um, we know how they are from there. Look at this, scaleless to palmetto. So we wanna make some double hats right here. Just beautiful. Now, why is it that I want to make double heads? And, I, and then a lot of people ask me for palmetto scaleless. Now, the reason why I'm not breeding palmetto scaleless is because I find that the genetics, the lineages are too weak. So I want to make sure that before I start selling them, I produce some awesome quality palmettos. I don't want to produce bubble eyes, which we do. And the palmettos are known to produce so it happens that I want to just try to outbreed them with some of my strongest uh, gene pool to make sure that they do well, you know? So that's a little bit of how we're, uh, what we're doing with our palmetto and our scaleless uh, cross project. So here, now I'm trying to figure out which was the male. Here's that long tail and here's my male. So. Currently, uh, we also breed king snakes and milk snakes. Now, the king snakes usually start producing for us first, and then our Pueblan milk snakes as well. But the corns are actually, they're just starting to, um, so they're just starting to, to ovulate and to start actually having copulations. Though we do have some that have already copulated. So this is how we do it when they, when they basically copulate, we actually put a red sticker. So when we actually put a red sticker, this means that we've actually seen a copulation with them. So that is really cool. And that's how we know uh, which ones are actually going to be going. We also want to know, like, why is it that we got some infertile eggs? Or why is it that these ones, is it because the male's no good or whatnot? So there's a lot of things. So you see, I don't know if you guys can see, but here there's like really the substrate is like pushed down. And the female is like really, really, really inflated. You can't really like showcase too much. Well, this is really an ovulation at this point. I don't want to really disturb her but that's that's an ovulation right there and then basically within seven to ten days well she'll have a shed and then ten days later she'll lay eggs and we should get some babies now one thing that it's good and those are the steps that we do is that we have the red sticker and we see an ovulation so we know for a fact that she is gravid now if she doesn't produce viable um, if she doesn't produce viable eggs well then from that point on we know that it might be because of the male and for whichever reason, there it is. So this is our candy cane sun kiss from the Walter creation line. I mean, just amazing eye candy at this point. Now these are definitely the source of all my candy cane sun kiss in my collection. And a lot of guys, like a lot of people tell me like, hey guys, there's not a lot, not a lot of people um, doing videos about colubrids uh, <laughs> because most of the colubrid breeders actually, the, the OGs are a little bit older, maybe less close to um, technology itself. But the truth is, is that it requires so much patience into breeding colubrids because it's really about line breeding and lineage like those candy sun kiss that i was showing you about is like 15 years in the work of producing like literally just a by, by basically just producing a um sorry i'm like losing losing mine i'm seeing a few things right now so like basically it's just like of breeding them together and making sure but i mean it's only an albino miami face so, <clears throat> but they look amazing. The genes are so simple, but because of the line breeding, it just makes it so much better. So here we have a scaleless crimson going here. What about scaleless amber? Let's see, two, 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 perfect. 
So they're just gonna be going down now. All right, so scaleless amber to scaleless amber. A lot of people say things about breeding scaleless to scaleless. Now this male here, he hates me. He really don't like me for whichever reason. Now, one thing that is funny and I, I love like raw footage and show you guys like the reality of it. There's actually like flies everywhere right now. There's like fruit flies. Why? Because we actually keep our bins dirty. Like it's very important for me. I find that in my opinion in when I breed um, my corns, I want to make sure that the bins are actually dirty because the smell really, really stimulates them. So I want the whole room to smell like sex. Yes. Yes, I said it. I want this room to smell like sex. Um, the, basically, the females secrete pheromones, and those pheromones are everywhere. It actually stimulates um, um, other males to breed, even though they're not, they might not be stimulated. Uh, they want to, um, they just want to be able to, they, they, they smell it. It's really like, it's really in the air, and they just, uh, it's, it's a good way of doing so. We actually have like some, like as a funny story, we have some younger animals that sometimes I tell myself, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna breed it right now. I'm gonna wait for the second clutch. Like they look okay and ready to breed, but I'm gonna wait for the second clutch to be able to do so. And then the next thing I know, they start producing eggs on me. And then I'm like, why is it that they produce eggs? Well, th there's really this thing, it's as if like they're, it's as if like sperm is airborne. It's completely madness. But most of the time those eggs are infertile. So sometimes it's better to actually just, just put in the mail, you know? Even if the, the snake's a little small, uh, we're gonna do, we can just do so. So currently we're almost finished our first half of our van. And I mean, look at these beautiful sun kiss. So these again, these are Miami sun kiss from the candy cane line. But I mean, this is like, this is a sun kiss. It's just, the contrast in this animal is just stunning. Completely stunning. And then, oh. Actually, this female's in shed. So I'm putting the male in right now just because um, I think, just because I'm on a routine right now. But what I do is I would take like a, a little like blue sticker. So I actually have one right in the bed right here. So I'll just put in a blue sticker, basically meaning with that red one saying that if it sheds, we need to put the like a, a laying box. Like for these bins, actually, we just like lay moss all over because we know they're gonna lay. So that's very, very important to do so. So we try to go around and make sure that we get everything organized and done the best that we can. You know, do we make mistakes? For sure we do. Everybody makes mistakes sometimes. We might put in the male with the wrong female and we'll figure it out. But um, certain projects that we really want to be able to have uh, the proper genetics, we just do, oh wow, look at this pair. I mean, look at this. So these are scaleless tessera annery. Basically, scaleless tessera annery to scaleless tessera annery just looks really, really amazing. Beautiful snake. And here we go. So we're almost there to the end of this half. Some of the bins definitely do need a little bit of cleaning, but it will be tomorrow when we finish breeding those, you know, so. And then, um, let me see. So we have this extra male. We have this awesome honey scale is right here going with some cinder so why is it that I want to put some honey and some cinder together well it's the shatter which is a cinder uh, sun kiss it's just simply amazing I want to get into scales and I want to see where uh, that comes up maybe it's been done before maybe not 
um, but definitely excited with this. One thing that I want to show you guys um, a little bit is this female right here. So this female here, I don't know if we can really see. Now she is probably going to be my first one. Now she is a matrix female. So this is actually uh, from the first babies that we've actually produced from the matrix. This is really from a matrix to matrix pairing and we're like super excited to get the matrix project to a whole other level. Um, we're super excited and there's a lot of other people that are excited as well as us. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, I wish I could do uh, the whole section and probably talk for about half hour, but I definitely got want like Amy would probably Amy, which is my edit our editor. Um, she would probably tell me that longer videos are not the way to go. So maybe I'll cut down this video up to half this room uh, because I do tend to talk a lot, but I just love sharing the passion with you guys. So make sure you do yourself as well share your passion share your knowledge and actually ask questions so if you like this this video make sure that you like that you click that you like it comment maybe uh another type of videos that you guys would want us to do we always like new ideas we love sharing uh, everything that we do. We have nothing to hide. I am very an open book. So everything I know, I'm willing to share. Sometimes it's just a question. It's just the, the question of asking the right questions so that I can provide the proper answer. So until then, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We love the support. Over 4,000 subscribers, which is insane. So let's go hit that 5,000. And then after that, we can chase the 10K. But until then, as usual, no stress. And until next time.